it has been the revelation of God as father and me as daughter and, and what that entails that has been the most significant thing that has healed me in my healing journey. Okay. And the first thing I want to say is that we, <clears throat> God's, uh, God's original intent for mankind was the garden of Eden. And I'm going to read to you just a little bit of chapter one of this book that I have not yet released. And I, as, as I read it, I really just want you guys to kind of just close your eyes and take it in, so to speak. And um, God began to show me over and over again that all of the crud and the crap that we have lived through, of course, was never, it was never his intention for us, that his intention for mankind was the garden. And so the, I believe the, the most significant part of God's character that will bring us true healing is the aspect of father. And so most of us have not experienced perfect parents <laughs> and, um, and it has left deficits in our heart. And so what I want to do is I want to read to you a portion of, um, of this. And, um, and I just want you guys to just kind of take it in. And then in a little bit, we're going to have group discussion and prayer. All right. So this is from a book that is not yet, um, it is not yet, um, what do you want to call it? It's not yet published yet. It's called The Oils and Wines of His Great Love. And um, chapter one says he wants to be near you. Okay. All right. So my first real worship encounter was around age nine. I was sitting in my bed awake one night, very late at night. I lived with my mother and my stepfather in a very turbulent household full of chaos and abuse. And one night I cried out to God just in case just in case he could hear me. And I asked him to confirm whether he was real or not. And I poured out my heart to him, expressing my sorrows and fears and pouring out the anguish of my soul due to the multiple abuses that I was experiencing. And I asked him to draw me in a, near to him in a way that I could feel him if indeed he was real. Because by this time, I wasn't sure that God was real just because of all the stuff I was going through. Words cannot adequately express uh, the tangible presence of my heavenly father that I experienced that night. And now when I look back at it, I'm going, God, how was that even possible because of everything that I was going through, right? And so um, while my earthly father tells me that I invited Jesus into my heart around age three, it was this night that I remember consciously asking Jesus to be my savior and Lord. It literally felt like God was in the room with me. I could feel his love. I could feel his nearness, his tenderness, his compassion for me. And <clears throat> I could feel his smile upon my heart. But this made no sense to me at all because my home was filled with anger and hostility and abuse and rejection. Nonetheless, I had asked him to show up. And for lack of better words, he had answered my feeble cry. And so as I sat alone, as I can, I can see the memory right now. As I sat alone in the darkness, something deep within me responded to his presence. And I began singing a few worship courses that I had heard in church. I simply ca cannot articulate the enormity of God's presence that rushed into my room that night. And with tears streaming down my face, as I genuinely worshiped him for probably the first time in my life. It was then that I had my first taste of how much God wanted to be near me possibly more than I wanted to be near him. You see, God's desire for intimate uh, fellowship with his children has been evident since creation. Genesis chapter one and verse 26 says, then God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Genesis 2, seven says, the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living being. Genesis 2.15 says the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden. And God, Genesis 3.8 says then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Clearly it was the daily custom of our heavenly father to walk in the garden in the cool of the day and fellowship with his creation, Adam and Eve. So our amazing heavenly father and genius creator God had fashioned a world that was perfectly suited for our human existence 
And then he placed a gorgeous garden in the earth just so that he could have an intimate space of fellowship with us. And I want to interject that God wants to um, create an even larger, more intimate space of fellowship with you in your life right now. And so if you were back in the garden, taking a leisurely stroll through the garden, that's, that's an activity that you do with somebody you love, somebody you cherish, somebody that you enjoy lingering moments of sweet fellowship with. This isn't the kind of activity that you do with somebody you hate or dislike or someone whose presence you merely tolerate out of duty or obligation. I want you to let that reality sink into your heart and your spirit. God wants to spend lingering moments with you. It's one of, one of many things that is going to bring healing to your heart. So can you imagine what it must have been like to watch from a bird's eye view as our heavenly father walked through this lush paradise that he had created talking with Adam and Eve? Why don't you guys close your eyes for a second? There's a little bit of a visualization thing. Can you imagine them strolling past bubbling brooks of crystal clear water, slowly rolling over spectacular rocks of various colors? along banks of flourishing vegetation, next to towering shade trees and stunning fragrant flowers. See, Adam and Eve didn't have the pressures of traditional human life as we know it. They didn't go to work every day. They didn't travel through rush hour. They didn't pay bills, run errands, or struggle to provide for themselves. No, they lived in a paradise, generously provided for them by a loving father who simply enjoyed their company. Now, God still desires daily, intimate, carefree fellowship and communion with us, those that he created in his own image and likeness. If you're a parent, I want you to consider how much delight it brings to your heart just to sit with your children and enjoy casual conversation with them. Remember the first time that you held your child in your arms and how overwhelmed you were with delight and joy for this tiny, beautiful creature, a mini version of you. How much more so does our Heavenly Father find immense delight and pleasure at our nearness when we draw close to him. I remember when my boys were newborn infants, how I would cuddle them in my arms and I would dance around the kitchen with them. And I was just full of joy and thanksgiving at the wonder of their existence. I remember thinking how lucky and blessed I was to be chosen to be their mother. It reminds me of a scripture where God says how he feels towards us. Zephaniah 317 says that he will take delight in you with gladness, he will quiet you in his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. If you research the Hebrew definitions of this passage, it would translate well as he leaps up and springs up over you with blithful glee and loving pleasures. He will quiet and calm you with his loving delight. He will rejoice over you with dancing and leaping and spinning around as if under a violent emotion causing his heart to palpitate as he sings songs of joyful proclamation. So if you research the Strong's Concordance, you're going to find those word definitions and translations. And so not only does God love you immensely so, passionately so, vehemently so, but he desires to be near you often. Repeatedly, the enemy has planted seeds of doubt in our mind, questioning whether or not God truly loves us, sometimes because of the horrible things that we've experienced in life. Uh, we, uh, the enemy will cause us to try to question whether he is truly for us and not against us, whether he's pleased with us or possibly angry with us. These erroneous thoughts or lies that plant doubt and unbelief in our minds, they give birth to feelings of unworthiness and they cause us to tend to believe that God is displeased with us or somehow disappointed in us. And this results in a false belief that God doesn't really want to be near us. For who would actually want to spend time with someone that they're angry with or displeased with or disappointed in? But in all actuality, God greatly desires to be near us. And he greatly desires to spend quality moments of fellowship and embrace us as beloved sons and daughters. Jeremiah 31, 3 says, The Lord appeared to me of old, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love, and therefore with loving kindness I have drawn you. Now, this word love, it means, I want you guys to hear this. It means to desire after, to pant after, to breathe after, hence to long for and greatly desire. So this everlasting love is, is eternal in duration and it is beautifully into infinite in measurement. It is ridiculously exceeding in degree 
and it cannot be calculated by human degrees of height, depth, width, or breadth. His faithful grace is remarkable. Oh, by the way, I'm about to read a quote. I didn't write these words that I'm about to read to you right now. His faithful grace is remarkable. His consistent mercies are innumerable. His passionate love is beyond comprehension. He has flooded us with rivers of mercy in the morning and drowned us with oceans of grace in the night. Uh, this was a quotation from a narrator, uh, one of Carrie Job's song called Forever, and it was done live. So if we really look at the word of God, we will see that God's word is clear. There's no secret hiding that we really are his first love, his treasured possession, his passion. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him, even if we didn't experience that type of earthly father here in the earth. Um, Psalm 103, 13 says that he knows how weak we are and he remembers that we are but dust. He, we are precious and honored in his sight, according to Isaiah 43 and verse four. We are beautiful to him as a royal diadem or a precious gem, according to Isaiah 62, three. John, 1 John 3, 1 says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we would be called children of God. Okay, so what I want us to do for just a second is I want to not write, well, yes, right now, but tomorrow and the next day, I want you to take a few moments of quiet reflection regarding how much you are greatly loved by our Heavenly Father. Now, if you don't have an overwhelming sense of conviction in your heart and you haven't experienced that in your relationship with God, then one of the, I can honestly say that it has been not only his character and nature as a loving father, but it has been his immense love for me that has been that which has melted every hard area of anger and bitterness and resentment in me. It has been his love that has quieted the anxieties and the fears and the doubts and even areas of panic in my life that I struggled with forever and ever. His father's heart is, I can attest because I have tasted and seen that it is warm and gentle towards you. So I'm going to read something to you real quickly. It's as if he is reach. Actually, I want you to picture this right now. So close your eyes and I want you to, whatever you imagine God to look like. Um, sometimes I picture him as Jesus. Sometimes I picture him as something else. But anyway, I want you to just get in your mind, whatever God might look like to you. Okay. And I want you to imagine him embracing you, like holding you in his arms like a daddy tenderly holds a three-year-old child. Guys, I am not going to cry tonight. As he holds you in his arms, he begins to sing love songs over you, like a parent sings lullabies over their toddler. As the warmth of his smile radiates over you, every fear, every weight, every pain disappears in the light of his glorious grace. His nearness secures you in his love and you realize maybe for the first time that his desire to be near you has always been and will always be greater than your desire for him. So I just want to read this over you. As we walk through this trauma healing journey, I want you to allow him to draw you near to his chest and close to his side. And as you sit in his presence, I promise you're going to experience multiple tidal waves of his grace and mercy that cause you to encounter him and to know him intimately and to experience the warm embrace of his father's heart.